Tulips. Sylvia Plath. The tulips are too excitable. It is winter here. Look how white everything is. How quiet. How snow there. I am learning peacefulness, lying by myself, quietly, as the light lies on these white walls, this bed, these hands. I am nobody. I have nothing to do with explosions. I have given my name and my day clothes up to the nurses and my history to the anesthetists, and my body to surgeons. They have propped my head between the pillow and the sheet cup, like an eye between two white leads that will not shut. Stupid purple, it has to take everything in. The nurses pass and pass, they are no trouble. They pass the way girls pass inland in their white caps, doing things with their hands, one just the same as another, so it's impossible to tell how many there are. My body is a pebble to them. They tend it as water tends to the pebble it must run over, smoothing them gently. They bring me numbness in their bright needles. They bring me sleep. Now I have lost myself. I am sick of baggage. My patent leather overnight case, like a black pill box. My husband and child smiling out of the family photo. Their smiles catch onto my skin, little smiling box. I have let things slip. A 30-year-old cargo boat stubbornly hanging onto my name and address. They have swabbled me clear of my lobbying associations. Scared and bare on the green plastic pillow trolley, I watched my tea set, my bureaus of linen, my books sink out of sight. And the water went over my head. I am a nun now. I have never been so pure. So pure. I didn't, I didn't want, want any flowers. I only wanted, wanted to lie with my hands turned up and be utterly empty. How free it is. You have no idea how free. The peacefulness is so big, it dazes you. And it asks nothing, a name tag, a few trinkets. It is what the dead close on, finally. I imagine them shutting their mouths on it, like a communion tablet. The tulips are too red in the first place. They hurt me. Even through the gift paper, I could hear them breathe lightly through their white swaddlings like an awful baby. Their redness talks to my wound. It corresponds. They are subtle. They seem to float, though they weigh me down. Upsetting me with their sudden tongues and their collar. A dozen red lead sinkers round my neck. Nobody watched me before. Now I am watched.
the tulips turn to me. In the window behind me, where once a day the light slowly widens and slowly thins, and I see myself, flat, ridiculous, a cut paper shadow between the eye of the sun and the eyes of the tulips, and I have no face. I have wanted to efface myself. The vivid tulips eat my oxygen. Before they came, the air was calm enough, coming and going, breath by breath, without any fuss. Then the tulips filled it up like a loud noise. Now the air snags and eddies round them, the way a river snags and eddies round a sunken, rust-red engine. They concentrate my attention. That was happy playing and resting without committing itself. The walls also seem to be warming themselves. The tulips should be behind bars like dangerous animals. They are opening like the mouth of some great, of some great African, African cat, and I am aware of my heart. It opens and closes its bowl of red blooms out of sheer love of me. The water I taste is warm and salt, like the sea, and comes from a country far away as hell.